Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to define what is actually a reflection coefficient. Reflection coefficient actually exists when there is a reflector wave. When we go to have a reflector wave, so when a lossless transmission line basically they terminate with load impedance ZL, then reflected wave will occur. Over this video, I'm going to prove it to you because of this transmission line terminate with an arbitrary load impedance ZL, which is not equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Hence, because of these characteristics, there will be reflected wave. And once there will be a reflected wave, we need to study what is actually a reflection coefficient. So this will be the objective for this video. This will be the part six series discussion on transmission line theory. If you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will find a series discussion on transmission line theory. They will give you more insight on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, really sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, when a lossless transmission line is terminate with a low impedance. So this will be the diagram. Okay, the figure above shows a lossless transmission line. Okay, so this is actually a lossless transmission line. They are actually terminate in an arbitrary low impedance ZL. Over here, okay, on one side of the transmission line, you can see that they are actually terminate with a low impedance ZL. Okay, this setup will illustrate wave reflection. Okay, so what is actually wave reflection on transmission line? We have this incident wave when they actually propagate along the transmission line, when they actually reach this point where there is impedance mismatch, reflection actually occur. So when we actually mention about impedance mismatch, which means that the characteristic impedance Z0 is not equal to ZL, which I will illustrate on the next page. Okay, because of this, this will be a fundamental property of distributed element. Okay, so if you still remember, transmission line is actually is a distributed element because of the wavelength. Okay, because the wavelength of the EM wave is so small okay, as compared to the length of the transmission line. And hence, because of these characteristics, transmission line is declared as a distributed element. Assume that an incident wave of the form, okay, so basically we have an incident wave, basically with this form here, is generated from a source at Z less than zero. Okay, so this is actually zero. Okay, so when any point along the transmission line, okay, let's say they are excited with this incident wave, with this form here, okay, we have seen that the ratio of voltage to current for such a traveling wave is Z0 which is the characteristic impedance of the line. Okay, which means that at any point, the impedance along the transmission line, they are actually equal to Z0, which is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. However, okay, one unique case actually occur. Okay, when the line is terminate in an arbitrary load, okay, so when this load here, ZL, which is not equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, Okay, the ratio of voltage to current at the load must be ZL, which means that, for example, okay, if I want to know my impedance over here, at this point, okay, it must be ZL. But in this situation, when ZL is not equal to Z0, okay, which is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, when they are not equal, you realize that I'm actually going to have a refracted wave. Okay, if I don't have a refracted wave, that means that Z0 is equal to ZL. However, for this case, because Z0 and ZL, they are not equal. And hence, from here, 
I conclude that there will be a reflected wave. Thus, a reflected wave must be excited with the appropriate amplitudes to satisfy this condition. The total voltage and current on the line can then be written as a sum of incident and reflected wave. So these two equations I have proved at part 5 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you cannot recall what, how I actually do all this proving, take a look on the part 5 series again before you continue this video. So over here, I actually have worked out that the voltage or the current is basically a sum of incident. Okay, so this will be the incident wave. This will be the refracted wave. So this will be the incident wave. This will be the refracted wave. Okay, the total voltage and current at the load are related by the load impedance. So at Z equal to zero, okay, we must have this. So this will be the characteristics okay, impedance for this load here, ZL. Okay, so basically it's governed by this equation. Okay, so at this point here, okay, the Z is equal to zero. Okay, so I can use zero to replace the Z term. Okay, in the outcome, I actually get the load impedance with this equation. Okay, so let's understand a little bit more regards on this equation. Okay, so these two set of equation, okay, which I have shown it to you over here. So these two equation I have gone through in part five series discussion. So I hope you take a look on that video before you continue. So what happened is basically when Z is equal to zero, okay, which means that this is equal to zero, E whole term here will be equal to zero because there's a Z term. This will be also with a Z term, this whole thing will become zero and E zero is equal to one. And the outcome, I actually will only have this term okay, and this term here because all this part here become one. This part will become one. Same for the current, this part here will become one. So the outcome will be V0 plus over Z0, which is illustrated here. This will become one, and therefore I have this term here. So if you still remember, I, earlier on I have mentioned this ZL is equal to V0 over I0, okay, which is illustrated earlier on over here. So therefore, with this, okay, I can work out V0 will be here. Over this I0 will be over this term here. So basically, I just combine these two equations. Okay, and over here, you can see that this will be the equation if I simplify this whole thing here. So next, okay, so what I'm going to do is basically I do a cross multiply. So ZL multiply by this term here and this Z0 open up this point here. So basically, I do a cross multiply. I have this equation here and I just uh, so-called expand the equation ZL multiply by this minus ZL multiplied by this equals to VO plus multiplied by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and VO minus multiplied by the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So what I want to do is basically, okay, I want to do this. Basically, I want to put this VO plus, okay, which is the forward transmission portion here, over here. So basically, I put this as a common factor here. So this thing I need to move over to the left so they will become minus. Okay, so this part I need to move to the right so they become plus, which I actually obtained this equation. And last but not least, if you still remember, this is basically the reflection coefficient. Okay, so later on, I'm going to define what is reflection coefficient. And from here, you can see that, okay, what I need to do is basically I shift this part over and this part I need to bring it to the left and therefore I have this equation. And this term is actually called the reflection coefficient. Like what I mentioned, I'm going to define what is reflection coefficient on my last slides. Okay, so in electrical engineering, the reflection coefficient is a parameter that describes how much of a wave is reflected by an impedance discontinuity in the transmission medium. Okay, remember this part here is basically the amount that will be reflected. Okay, if you still remember, this will be the incident wave, this will be the reflected wave. So this term here is actually indicate the amount of reflected wave. So the amount of reflected wave over the incident wave, this will give you the reflection coefficient. Okay, as illustrated over here. Okay, in electrical engineering, the reflection coefficient is a parameter that describe how much of a wave is reflected by an impedance discontinuity in the transmission medium. Okay, 
it is equals to the ratio of the amplitude of the reflected wave to the incident wave with each expressed as spatial. Okay, so this is not crucial. Okay, but I want to say that basically what they mean that is equals to the ratio of the amplitude of the reflected wave over the incident wave, which I have illustrated over here. So this will be called a refracted coefficient. On transmission line, refraction coefficient is used to calculate how much of the electromagnetic wave is reflected by an impedance discontinuity. Okay, let's take a look over here to understand better. Okay, so you can see that this will be the incident wave. Okay, so when the incident wave actually hit a different impedance. Okay, so basically imagine this is Z0, this is ZL. Basically, they have different value. Okay, you can see that some will continue to propagate forward. However, you also notice that there will be also a reflected wave. Okay, so basically, this is basically to prove that how two different impedance okay, in the outcome of a reflected wave. And therefore, because of this, we need to understand what is actually a reflection coefficient. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.